Chapter 1. Test Subject 3028. In a surgery lab. The room was dark and grave silent except for the beeping of the heart rate monitor. The shadows of three spread out in the dark place casting the ward in a gloomy aura of fear. Looking at the origin of the shadows, three men dressed in long white lab coats could be seen standing around a surgical bed, their faces lit with seriousness and slight hope. They were all about forty years of age, their eyes, a taint of red due to exhaustion but also flickering with a type of madness as they focused on the figure on the bed. Increase output rate by forty. One of the scientists with long dark hair uttered, breaking the silence of the room. Increasing output rate by forty. The AI voice repeated causing the heart rate monitor to start beeping fast as the figure on the bed suddenly began twitching. It was that of a boy of about sixteen with raven dark hair. His eyes were closed, his handsome white face lit in slight agony as his mouth was covered by some strange machine. His legs and arms were stretched out beside him each bonded together with chains on the surgical bed rendering him unable to move them. Different wires were tied in his body each entering into his body while a large metallic pipe could be seen dipping into his head from below, a green serum present in them. The boy's body repeatedly twitched causing the continuous clanking sounds of chains to echo in the lab. Increase output rate by 80. The scientist ordered again as the heart rate monitor increased its beeping. The boy's eyes snapped open revealing deep blue irises, with the white of his eyes covered in bulging red veins due to pain. His face, the true definition of a figure going through pain, and the veins that appeared all over them were more than enough to show that. Pain. Horrifying pain. Zeres felt as if a thousand bolts of electricity were being passed continuously into his body destroying every minute cells in his body. He screamed out in pain, but not a single voice was heard in the lab due to the sound prevention machine placed on his mouth. Increase output rate by 90. The same voice echoed out again as the beeping increased even faster. Zeres felt his gaze slowly descending into the darkness but it was immediately dashed away as the pain slammed into his system causing him to scream out as the surgical bed was being moved around while the chain clattered repeatedly. Test subject cells have reached their limit. The probability of mutation has increased by 93%. The AI voice echoed out in the room. The scientist as if deaf to the voice coldly ordered. Increase output rate by 99%. The beeping of the monitor increased by hundreds of folds as Zeres's eyes were immediately covered in a deep crimson color, his face covered in strange dark and red veins. Blood oozed out from his eyes, nose, and ears as his body spasmed uncontrollably. The pain was unbearable as he felt every inch of his cells being destroyed. His body cells fought defensively against the invading elements but it was rapidly losing. Zeres's body eventually reached its peak as eyes rolled to the back, his body falling on the bed with a thump. The heart rate monitor stopped beeping at this point as the line on it became a constant straight. Test subject 3028 body has reached its absolute limit. The cells have been corrupted by the BD-06 serum. The AI voice echoed out in the room breaking the stillness. Another failure. One of the scientists said in a disappointed tone. Well, at least he was the highest result we have ever obtained, able to stand the infusion of the serum at 99% for 10 seconds. The scientist who ordered the continuous increase said in a blank voice, making it unsure whether he was praising or disappointed. Dispose him of already. Let's take a break before the next subject comes in. The last scientist said as he clicked on his watch before the trio moved out of the lab. Remaining in the room was Zeres who already fainted and was drowning in the pool of blood that oozed out from his senses. The scientist didn't even bat an eyelid as if he was nothing but another rat who failed. This was the cruel reality of life. A man dressed in dark overalls soon entered the lab unbounding the chain around Zeres before putting his body into the large bag in his hand. His eyes held no emotion looking at the bloody figure of the boy. It was already a common thing at this point. Carefully zipping the bag, he carried it in his hands as he moved out of the lab, the door zipping to a close and plunging the room into silence once again. Chapter 2 Thirst for Revenge A figure dressed in dark overalls and carrying a large bag in his hands could be seen standing in front of a gate. 
his hand slowly reached for the button beside the gate as he clicked on it causing a red wave of light to emanate from the door and scanning his palms. Beep. The door slowly opened as he walked into it. The place was dark and icy cold. The figure slowly bent as his hand reached for the bag, quickly unbuttoning it and bringing out Zeres's body. Carrying his body, he flung it outward with speed as Zeres was thrown deep into the gigantic abyss present below. Zipping up the bag, the figure made his way out of the place as the door slowly closed behind him. The silence was stifling and nerve-wracking. Inside the large abyss where Zerus was thrown was a pile of bodies reaching up to almost 1,000 plus dead bodies, each badly mutilated in different ways. It seemed this was where the dead bodies of all experimental failures were kept. In this dark gloomy place. A blue light suddenly shone in this dark place giving the dark abyss a strange glow. Zerus coughed out repeatedly his voice hoarsed. His handsome white face was deathly pale due to having lost too much blood. His breathing was extremely layered and painful but deep in those blue eyes was some sort of calmness that should be impossible for someone in that type of condition. Zeres assessed the condition of his body as he saw that all his muscles were completely paralyzed and couldn't move a single inch except for his eyebrows. He knew he was losing too much blood and his death was close by if nothing was done to his body. But where could he find medical attention in this place where corpses are kept? His fate was already sealed. His eyes flashed with hatred as the memories of how he got here flashed in his blue eyes. He couldn't believe what was happening as the people he called clan members sold him out to a dark force as a lab rat for 2.5 million star coins. At least I was sold off for a good amount he thought to himself chuckling a bit. In his measly existence, all he had couldn't even amount to 50 star coins even if all his clothes and whatever he had were sold off. Yeah, that was just how poor he is. Zeres never knew who his parents were. All he could remember was growing up in the Celestria family orphanage home. He was at least given a home to live in and a meal for the day. All the other day was spent teaching them martial arts and combat techniques and among the other orphans, he was number one when it came to battle proficiency. The guardians of the orphanages even told him he had a bright future ahead as he would awaken a powerful gene due to his godly comprehension of combat techniques. His meals were even increased to twice a day, invoking the jealousy of other orphans, but his joy was short-lived. When the gene awakening test came, he didn't awaken the so-called powerful gene but awoken the trashy F-grade multicolor hair gene. A gene that allowed him to change the color of his hair to black or red. His status immediately plummeted as he came crashing down from the best in martial art to the butt of the joke of the orphanage. It was pretty common knowledge, that no matter how powerful your comprehension of battle arts is what's the point with a trashy F-grade gene that only makes you change your hair color in a world where battle strength means all? His meals were denied to him and he only managed to survive due to Grandma Mia who secretly passed him some food at night when all was asleep. A kind-hearted lady who he felt understood his plight in such a dog-eat-dog -dog world. But good days never last long as that also came crashing down when Grandma Mia urgently awakened him at night telling him to run due to unknown reasons. He followed behind her as they both moved out of the orphanage but they weren't even long gone when they were caught and he watched Grandma Mia beheaded in front of him for trying to kidnap a kid while he, the kid, was sold off in the guise of a rehabilitation center to cure the effect that might have arisen from the shock of kidnapping. The last thing he remembered was being sold to a man in dark robes for 2.5 million star coins to become their experimental subject and he found himself in the lab after that. His eyes flashed coldly as he clenched his teeth, tightly due to pain. The pain of being betrayed. The pain of the only thing he had taken away from him. He wanted revenge. He wanted to slaughter the entire Celestria family for the pain they had caused him but he knew that was impossible. He would be dying here today. His eyes soon became blurry as tears slipped out from the sides due to his weakness and also wish undone. The world was getting darker and he slowly drifted off into the darkness that beckoned to him like a loving mother to her lost newborn. The darkness was still as Zeres felt himself losing the concept of time. His eyes suddenly opened but immediately widened in shock at the sight before him. 
he could see his body was made of some type of milky white energy but what shocked him senseless was the huge crystals surrounding him that spread into the far distance. Each of them was taller than he was, with a beautiful glow like that of stars and they blessed him with their radiance. Where am I? Zeres asked looking around at this weird space. Am I dead? Is this my soul form? Just what is happening? The place was oddly quiet, not a single sound was made, and Zeres's eyes slowly moved towards the nearest crystal. It was a crystal, unlike the rest. Unlike the others which radiated a beautiful light, this one was like a dark hole, which continuously revolved in the crystal making one feel as if their soul was to be devoured. It seemed to have no depth, just like an unending abyss. But even though scary and bone-chilling, Zerus felt himself deeply attracted to this crystal. It was like something was calling out to him from the abyssal darkness present within the dark crystal. It was like a part of him that was locked away and disregarded but finally had the chance to meet with him once again. What are you? Zeres asked as his hand slowly stretched out and touched the surface of the crystal. re -ipple. A ripple emanated forth emerging from the place he touched, gently traveling through the void of crystals. But what happened next shocked Zeres to his core. End of chapter 2, click on the link in the comments section to continue reading the novel.